Recently, XRP has been trading below its recent highs after breaking out on the news of the potential settlement. We popped up here to about 64 cents. We're currently down about 10%. Since then, there's been a lot of speculation on what happens next surrounding the potential for an SEC appeal, which has split the community. That's where some folks have been spreading absolute BS and false hopium, which we'll cover later in the video. We'll dive into these claims, separate fact from fiction, and also explain why XRP has not broke out now that the lawsuit has a judgment and a direct settlement number of $125 million, which Brad Garlinghouse seems more than happy to pay. How the new Ripple stablecoin RLUSD has just been launched on the testnet and is primed to take over a 2.8 trillion dollar market uh, that is expected to reach that valuation by 2028 how gold jobs and an interesting leading indicator called the pmi can tell us about what's going to happen next in markets and i'll also tell you the truth about xrp that nobody else is willing to talk about last before we begin the video head on over to bullrunners.com and subscribe to learn how to take advantage of our all market solution doesn't matter if it's a bear market or a bull market ultimately you can discover how to earn more crypto in less than 10 minutes with the number one play to earn xrp game you can get that xrp to work for you you're good to go you're gonna earn some crypto so that said if you're feeling blessed and bullish comment 777 and if you're gonna be the richest person in your family tree smash the subscribe button before we dive in a quick reminder that the opinions in this video are for informational and educational purposes only and do not constitute financial legal or investment advice all investments, including cryptos, carry risks and potential losses. Always do your own research and consult with a licensed financial advisor. We are not licensed financial advisors and relying on our content for financial decisions is at your own risk. By watching this video, you agree we are not responsible for any losses or damages and we do not guarantee any specific results or outcomes. Some of the links below may be affiliate links and we may earn a commission, which actually helps support this channel and helps us to create value based videos like this we also hold some positions in the cryptocurrencies that we talk about but that's only because we do what we believe in however this should not be interpreted as a recommendation for you to do the same with that said let's get into the video now recently the xrp community seems to be split and eating itself alive I would argue this is not productive and it's probably best not to engage. It doesn't make sense and it doesn't make dollars. Uh, but right here we have someone saying it's so disappointing. I love everything about the team, what they're doing, but the price action is so crap. It can never hold a price and break resistance. Another gentleman says XRP is easily the worst asset in crypto. Well, I can assure you I've seen far worse. I've seen a lot of rugs. I've seen a lot of products that simply don't accomplish anything. They're there for marketing and marketing alone. Uh, but he's basically saying invest in XRP and stay broke. And finally, I think people are just getting impatient. I mean, it's been a very long wait. We're talking 6.6 .6 years uh, since our previous all-time high, over two years in a range. We finally had that lawsuit uh, settlement deal, and it's likely it's not going to be appealed, but we don't know. Uh, that said, I think it's current market environment that's really making it struggle. So that said, someone said the lawsuit ended just two days ago, and the XRP community is already reacting impatiently. It's astonishing how quickly XRP P holders can expect gains they're probably the most impatient investors in crypto and i would argue that's probably not true people have been very patient for xrp over the course of a few years and more very few cryptos right have maintained a range this strong over that period of time but it's no fun when you've invested at 50 cents two years ago and it's there today so uh you know you've got a lot of people now in the community starting to crap on it uh someone saying my dad passed away before any gains another person's like we still have to watch other coins outperform XRP even after the lawsuit is likely over. Of course, we are frustrated. So yes, there is frustration inside of the community, but I'm going to explain how to approach these types of emotions and feelings in a market environment such as this. And then I'm going to explain the total BS that people have been sharing, which is not likely to be true. And the first one that's setting off my BS detector is this article over on Coinpedia saying the SEC accepted its defeat. It won't challenge Ripple XRP case ruling. 
Now, I think that is a very misleading headline I've seen, and the reason I found it is because people posted it online. So obviously, um, it is one of those things where when people see a headline like this, sometimes they don't verify the source. And generally speaking here, if you were to read this article at all, near to the end they literally say the sec may still consider appealing the july 2023 decision so ultimately it's just kind of like you know we don't really know what to expect and i think it's okay not to know what to expect as long as you have a game plan to not only manage risk but potentially uh put yourself in a better position in the future in terms of your investments now the second thing that set off my bs detector and i would argue this is total bs uh is this post right here from brett hill basically stating that xrp is officially declared the new global reserve currency and a shocking turn of events world leaders have unanimously agreed to replace the u.s dollar with xrp as the new global reserve currency the decision was made after a top secret meeting at an undisclosed location where delegates from 150 countries discussed the future of global finance according to insiders the decision was unanimous with many leaders setting xrp superior technology speed and scalability as key factors now notice how there's language here is talking about superior technology speed and scalability which is all things that we do agree with when it comes to xrp are there you know cryptos or technologies out there that serve different purposes that maybe have a little bit more speed sure a little bit more scalability sure technology better technology maybe but at the end of the day when it comes to this trifecta uh, xrp does have some pretty good stuff so they're basically using uh this type of language and these key words to get you to believe it because this is believable so it's kind of like you know a little bit of yeast leavens the whole loaf and i would argue they're spreading uh sprinkling all the stuff that we'd want to hear in there in order to spread a lie ultimately what is this top secret meeting at an undisclosed location right who are the delegates and who are the insiders in a statement, a spokesperson now, again, another spokesperson for the IMF, and again, another key word um, and something that the XRP community has become familiar with. We believe that XRP is the future of global finance. Its advanced technology and decentralized nature make it the perfect choice for the new reserve currency. As news of the decision spreads, XRP holders around the world are celebrating. Now, I'll tell you this, and this is what I've learned about crypto and markets. At the end of the day, um, markets are forward looking so if this was real and this was true the whole global crypto market would be jumping on it the problem is this is not verifiable and so it's not being reflected in the price if this was i can assure you the smartest people in the world the people at the imf the people over in korea the people in the banks uh, the central banks in europe and the united states and anyone who's a who's who in the financial world would price this type of thing in so nothing here is confirmed you could look it up go ahead and go to google go to ChatGPT. go to literally any search engine you will not find a single thing that promotes this now you might have articles that talk about how the imf has researched crypto and in particular xrp but none of them are stating exactly what this thing is stating and so a lot of the times it's easily it's easy to be misled and it's important to really verify information twice or three times by sources other than just Twitter. I think Twitter is a great place to start, but it's usually not the end all be all. So if you've been paying attention, it's obvious that the recent sell-off in the Japan uh, yen carry trade uh, created for some complicated markets. And then you have this piece right here where it says the likelihood of a recession is anyone's guess. However, and these are reports that I've looked into, uh, Goldman Sachs has raised its odds of a U.S. recession to 25%. JP Morgan sees a 35% chance of one starting before the year end which is what makes gold such an attractive asset class to the people right baby boomers who arguably have the greatest amount of wealth of all of the current living generations and in an article from fortune it says baby boomers could pass on 53 trillion dollars to the next generation i've heard it said between 70 trillion upwards of 80 trillion but right here a 2022 study projects the wealth transfer through 2045 will be 84.4 trillion 72 in assets to heirs 11.9 donated to charities but greater than 60 or 53 trillion dollars and you know what asset they like in uncertain economic times more than anything else, more than even cash, it is 
gold, right? So Bloomberg's Mike McGlone said recession fears could drive gold to $3,000. Mike McGlone, the senior commodity strategist at Bloomberg Intelligence, warned that the current economic situation might surpass the 2008 financial crisis in severity. Drawing comparisons to pre-2008 indicators, McGlone highlighted significant risks of increased stock market volatility and global recession, particularly emphasizing economic challenges in China. He suggested that the investors should shift towards risk-off assets, predicting that gold could rise to $3,000 an ounce among ongoing economic instability. And so when you look at gold, we've actually had a about a little over a decade, right? Um, actually 14 plus years of uh, a cup and handle, right? Here was the cup, then we had a handle, and it was a long, you know, time coming. And then when we finally broke out, we started making new all time highs. And so typically in a chart pattern like this, when you do break above, especially such a long time frame and range, you get about a 100% move to the upside. So I'd say about $900 move to the upside. And as you can see here, about a $900 move would bring us close to about $3,000. So I guess it really does make sense. And already on the weekly time frame, gold has consistently been putting in higher highs, higher lows. Each time we see a sell off, we see some wicks on the downside which is indicative of demand. And so what this is telling us is that people, right, people with money are flocking to risk on, or excuse me, risk off assets. This means, right, that if we get into a sticky situation uh, when it comes time to have that Fed September rate cut meeting, whether we have another type of a global banking crisis, if you will, whether we have the World War III, whatever the case may be, right, it would be safer to be in something like gold for people who don't look at Bitcoin as a reserve right now because the reality is it's currently been dumping with markets, whereas gold has consistently been holding its steady range and then pumping. Now, if you haven't already, head on over to bullrunners.com, uh, enter your email in, you'll land on this page, and on this page you can watch an eight-minute video where Nick explains just how cool this game is. It's the number one play-to-earn XRP game, and again, it's an all-market solution, so it doesn't matter if it's a bear market, bull market. Ultimately, when you do this, you're putting your your money, you know, your XRP to work, and then you earn crypto in the process. And it's a very straightforward, simple three-step process. So first, you create an XRP wallet, then you get your game pieces. Again, very straightforward. These videos are very thorough. They explain all of the questions that you might have or answer them. And then finally, once you do that, you play the game and you get your crypto in return. It literally takes like 10 minutes tops per day. So go ahead and go to bullrunners.com and I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Which leads me into my next point. We're looking at the price of gold and how it's been climbing, which is indicative of the fact that people are starting to flock to these risk off assets. And the reality is something like the Japanese, the BOJ, uh, yen carry trade might not have affected the US markets as much if we weren't getting so much weak incoming economic data. One of those things being the unemployment rate. And when this is something that we've talked about a lot on this channel, the US unemployment rate has risen for four consecutive months, the longest streak since the 2008 financial crisis. Now, a lot of the times when you see this type of language, it's there to have that shock factor. Just because it happened one other time in 2008 doesn't mean it's supposed to happen now. And again, just because history, uh, you know, doesn't often repeat itself, it can rhyme. So this might happen, you know, in a similar way, but it might not be as crazy or as bad as 2008 by any means. Two. That said, over the last 75 years, every time unemployment rose for four consecutive months, the U.S. economy entered recession. The jobless rate has surged from 3.8% in March to 4.3% in July, and its highest level since October of 2021. Uh, meanwhile, U.S. hires rates declined 3.4% in July, its lowest level since pre-pandemic, uh, average of 3.8. That said, you can see here we are getting an increase here, and this is, again, um, indicative of the fact that we might start to enter a recession. These gray bars would be those recessionary periods here in 2008 to 2010. Yet again, a very small one uh, with a V-shaped recovery in um, uh, 2020 with COVID. And it is possible and potential that we do here. But that also means we could just start to decline similar to this. It's just that this is higher than average for not experiencing a recession. 
Last, we'll dive into something called the ISM Purchasing Managers Index. And this is a forward looking or a leading indicator uh, that kind of helps us to, to know whether or not a potential recession is around the corner. Now, on these green lines in particular, I have kind of what, you, what I would call a healthier range, right? Uh, just because we are um, going through the ebbs and flows of the market. So when this thing increases tremendously, that is indicative of the fact that there's a lot of demand in the markets uh, consumers and companies are doing well and so on and so forth so uh, they are going to continue to increase their capacity uh, and production in order to meet that demand on the flip side when things are lower it means that there's arguably less demand in the market now the way that it is described right here is the, the manufacturing ISM report on business is based on data compiled from purchasing and supply executives nationwide. Survey responses reflect the change, if any, in the current month compared to the previous month. So it is a monthly reading. And we're talking about a backlog of orders, new export orders, imports, production, supplier deliveries, inventories, customer inventories, employment, and prices. The report shows the percentage reporting each response. The net difference between the number of responses in the positive economic direction and the negative economic direction and the diffusion index now you don't need to all the know all of those fancy terms but basically the way they describe this is a reading above 50 percent indicates that the manufacturing economy is generally expanding and below indicates that it is generally declining and so when you look on this index right here you can see that in prior situations in the dot-com bubble we declined to be low a 45 reading right here right uh, back in 1990 to 91 actually around the time I was uh, in born into this planet and I remember my father said that we had a recession when you were born uh, and we were just trying to come out of it and he lost a lot of his you know uh, what he'd built up in terms of money and wealth and so uh, you know it, it proves right here that the ISM was pretty accurate and in similar fashion right in 2007 2008 this thing dumped all the way to 35 you know on a reading and right around here at 45 is typically considered or indicative of recession well guess what 2020 same thing and finally we have failed to break above the 50 range on any serious time frame the last time we were there was in March since then we've getting consistently negative readings which again I think is causing a lot of asset managers to potentially want to get out of the markets which is why we have weakness in a situation where BOJ had that type of an incident uh, I think it's just made matters worse uh, and then right here right since uh, back in October of 2022 we haven't really been into these ranges so uh, that said I I will say anything below a 45 reading at this point is very indicative of a recession and currently we are trending down and have failed to break above the 50. So it's fair to say with all of the weak economic data, with the uptrend in gold, uh, and the fact that crypto is currently still considered a risk on asset class, uh, it's no wonder why it dumped. And it's no wonder that there's less and less support as we look at this range right here, right? And we are consistently getting lower highs and lower lows. And that it does include this low right here. So even though we had a relatively strong bounce, it is very much possible that we don't see enough momentum to the upside for us not to go lower uh, and my expectations could be up you know downwards of like 42 to forty three thousand dollars which would be a next major range of support between there to 40. Uh, now is that going to happen I don't know I don't love the McDonald's pattern but I would be remiss not to warn you and tell you what I see here I also don't want you to feel ultra bearish and like you need to sell everything because I've made that mistake in the past only to see things rally well beyond the you know point that I thought they would and then all of a sudden I'm caught with my pants down and it's like uh oh I, I no longer had the crypto that I would have had and I would have made a lot more money so I think it's really important to manage uh, your expectations and risk uh, accordingly and thoroughly and ultimately think about the future what is the future really going to look like do we see crypto doing really well over the upcoming decade and if the answer is yes and you're not a day trader right 
you're not even a swing trader, but you're an investor. You're someone who wants to buy and hold these assets longer term. Do you believe Bitcoin's gonna be worth more than $120,000 in five years? Do you believe XRP is gonna be worth more than $3 in the next five years? And if the answer is yes, then virtually every single dip and dump is a buying opportunity. It's something to add to the position and portfolio and arguably get off of social media because there's a lot of crap on there and it'll honestly distract you and uh, probably uh, convince you to make irrational decisions. Now, when you look at the chart of XRP, it does actually look relatively stronger than Bitcoin. Why? Well, because from its recent major uh, local high, I should say, in July of 2023 on the SEC outcome, uh, you can see here that we are actually, yes, we're painting new lower highs, but for the first time we had a higher low right here. So this low is higher than this low. Then that could be potentially indicative of the start of a new uptrend. So this is a very bullish pattern. And I think a lot of people just kind of get lost in the weeds on social media or watching people post negative things saying, man, we should have already been at new all time highs here when the reality is like this was a really good move from 43 cents all the way back up to 64 cents. And yes, it's going to hang out here for a while in a very negative economic environment. It's not like XRP is just going to shrug off everything at all at once, right? Some of the biggest markets in the world are struggling to stay up and we can expect XRP not to. It's like XRP is a very small market cap relative to TradFi markets, right? To even Bitcoin. It's not even close. So uh, if Bitcoin's going to struggle, arguably XRP would too. And you could say, well, that's not what it's designed for. It's like, yeah, but the price is the price is the price. And ultimately, I can't argue around that. So I really have to have a game plan looking forward into the future. And I do believe the future for a company like Ripple is bright. There's no reason they would go through all of this trouble with the SEC. There's no reason that would, they would consistently support a community and a token. There's no reason that they would continue to develop new products and ways of doing business. And unless, of course, they were here to stay and they weren't just, you know, another coin rug that had a lot of money behind them and a good community to begin with. Ultimately, Ripple is currently testing their RLUSD, which is their stable coin. And they're excited to, to announce that it's going to be available on the XRP Ledger and Ethereum mainnet. But as things stand, it is currently only on the testnet. And the reason for launching it is because there is clear demand for stable coins that deliver trust, stability, and utility. The statement reads, once RLUSD is available, Ripple will use both RLUSD and XRP in its cross-border payment solution to serve its global customers and dramatically improve their experience. And I think this is actually a massive development. I don't think people realize how big it is, but our, you know, we're talking the third largest asset class in all of crypto, which is USDT. And if Ripple actually does have the regulatory clarity and they do really good auditing surrounding the reserves of uh, their stable coin, then ultimately I think they're going to win long term considering this is a market that's expected to reach 2.8 trillion by 2020 eight which is massive like that's currently bigger than the entire crypto market so uh i think xrp and rlusd in co uh, combination will really dr be a driving factor to bring on board more global customers and even u.s customers as we get more regulatory clarity so if you enjoyed the video smash the like button the subscribe button uh leave a comment down below to let us know what you think uh you know the price target is for the end of 2024 and uh ultimately you guys have literally nothing to lose and everything to gain right if you just go to freaking bullrunners.com we tell you this in every video it's like hilarious to me that you could watch these videos over and over and over and be like oh shoot you know i'm not gonna do that it's like dude do it you have literally nothing to lose it's like and everything to gain so discover how to earn more crypto in less than 10 minutes with the number one play to earn xrp game all market solution doesn't matter if, if the market starts to trend down a little bit doesn't matter if it trends up a little bit if it trends up you're gonna be really happy but if it trends down it's a great way to hedge again risk, if you will. So go to bullrunners.com and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.